or our systems of shame and blame which make us quick to judge and limit compassion. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For hurtful words that condemn and for angry deeds that harm, have mercy on us, O Lord. For the ways our church participates in systems that perpetuate unjust treatment, inequalities, and exclusion, have mercy on us, O Lord. For the abuse of privilege without seeing the pain it causes throughout the body of Christ, have mercy on us, O Lord. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for His sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
We worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. This is a reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And it was so. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night and let their, them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse to the sky to give lights on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let the birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living and moving thing, with which the water teems according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind, and it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. 
In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, boys and girls. This is Pastor Dan, and I'm happy to be with you in this way this morning. I miss all of you. Hope to see you soon. I hope you're all doing well and you're safe. I want to do a little thing this morning that we can remind ourselves of the fact that we worship God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we're going to do two things this morning that remind us, that we remind ourselves of the fact that we worship and serve the Trinity. The first one will be serious, and the second one will be a little more joyful. So let's try the first one. So I'm going to demonstrate it to you, making the sign of a cross and naming the persons of the Trinity, and then I'm going to ask you to follow along with me. So this is the way it goes. You start with your forehead in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And you end up at your heart. Now try it with me. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Very good. Now the next reminder of the Trinity is a little more joyful. I'm going to stand sideways a little bit to demonstrate this. I learned this from a Lutheran pastor in Namibia in Africa about 15 years ago. So I'm going to demonstrate it to you and then I'm going to ask you to do it with me. So you hold your hand up like this. I'm right-handed, so it's easy to hold my left hand up. If you're left-handed, it might be easier to hold this hand up and use this hand. But I'm going to demonstrate it because I'm right-handed. So this is the way it goes. Father, Son, Spirit. So you do three circles, okay? So now I want you to try it with me. So you put your hand up like this, and let's do it. Father, Son, Spirit. Very good. So this is Holy Trinity Sunday, and so these are two ways that we can remind ourselves that we worship and serve God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began, Martin Luther put it this way, so also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up, all of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity, probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth. 
and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, inequity of racial injustice, Anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country. But we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. 
Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. with one another and the whole creation let us pray for our shared world God of community you form us as your church guide our bishops Elizabeth and Patricia in this time when we call for strong leadership strengthen us all to be bold in our proclamations Lord in your mercy hear our prayer God of creation you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace equality, and unity. Instill wisdom in advocates who work toward justice and often ignore communities, especially during this time of COVID-19 infection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us to see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. 
console, heal, and nourish all in need, especially Ella, Nancy, Bob, family and friends of Ryan, Larry and Carol, Robin, George, Carl, and those we name aloud or silently at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregations and communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection may be filled with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together boldly. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us take time and share the peace of Christ with one another this morning. opportunity this morning to give thanks to God and to all of you for your continuing generosity in your gifts of time, talent, and treasure as we face the challenges of these days. Thank you so much and God bless you all.
It's the song.